Hello, everybody. My name is Dan. Welcome back to the fastest podcast on the planet, the Forged in Dirt podcast. Today, I'm in beautiful St. Peter, Minnesota um, with Bill and Matt Johnson. Bill, why don't we start with you? Why don't you say hi to the people and just simply tell them where you're from? Hey, everybody. Uh, I live in St. Peter, Minnesota, born and raised. This is where we have our little race shop in our garage and little two-car team. Finally, two-car team. Been a dream of mine since I started racing go-karts it was to have two race cars in my garage and here we are and it's really cool the way you're doing it because you're doing it with your son Matt and we're sitting here with Matt as well Matt how's it going buddy it's going pretty good I'm uh, excited to get this show on the road yeah well uh, just like your old man where are you from are you from I'm, St. Peter here you've been I'm, born and raised yeah I'm born and raised in St. Peter that's awesome. Mm-hmm. You enjoy the area? Oh, yes. Yeah, it has a lot of history behind it. Absolutely. You're 17 as well. So uh, you're 16. 16. I'm yep. sorry. My apologies. I thought you were 17 already. Um, well, I better let a lot of people know that you're 16 because yep. a lot of people who think you're 17. Really? Um, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people at Arlington think you're 17. But nonetheless, you're still in high school. Yes. Where do you go to school? Uh, St. Peter High School. And how do you like that? Eh. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I'm not a huge fan of school. Yeah. Well, yeah. Eh, you love race cars though, right? Yep. If you right now had to say, this is what I want to do for a job, what would you say that that is? Race cars. <laughs> Race cars. <laughs> yep. You want to be some sort of welder or what do you what uh, do you want to do in that? Yeah, welding and, or mechanic field. Um, like, I'm actually taking two classes for that, uh, doing power mechanics and welding, intro to, intro to metal working, excuse me. I'm sure that's something you like, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Metal working is fun. I, you know, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I owned fast wings for a brief stint about a three-year period there when we bought it from the guys that that owned it down in um, uh, Butterfield and great name for a town by the way right right Um, moved it up here to St. Peter ran it in town here for a couple years and then the economy kind of took us out price of aluminum was going up through the roof and You know, the price of wings wasn't, we, the price of wings basically wasn't able to rise as fast as our costs were. So we decided to just pull the plug. Yeah. And that's always sad. And I think we're going to see some of those things occurring here. Yeah. It's a, it's a unfortunate situation It you know, I, it was one of the things that I always wanted to do was number one, own my own business. Number two, work with race cars. Um, and that opportunity introduced me to a lot of people that I would have never got to meet. I mean, to this day, I'm, you know, I can call Daniel Osaski on the cell, on my cell He'll phone. He'll call you. And yeah, he, yeah, he calls me and I call him. We, you know, chat at least, at least once a year. He used to be a lot more frequent but um yeah i've stayed at danny's house you know and if it wasn't for that business i would have never made that connection right yeah well i think that's a perfect transition into back into the racing concept because i really want to hear about your original days of racing i'm sitting here in what is one of the most impressive uh feats i've ever seen which is just trophies scattered all over the place um and one of those is a karting trophy uh, and a lot of people may not know this, but you started on road courses, right? Yep. I started racing road course, asphalt road course when I was eight years old. This is when I got, I got my first road race go-kart for Christmas. My mom and dad gave it to me. Um, and I, my original number was number 77. That's awesome. And then, uh, you know, just like a lot of, um, a lot of kids when they're growing up, they want to be like their dad. So I inherited my dad's number, the the following year, which is 56, and I've been number 56 pretty much the entire, my entire big car racing career. That's awesome. During that portion of time when you're racing carts, you ran with some pretty impressive names. Yeah. There's yeah. a couple of folks in there that ended up in NASCAR and some other big names of racing. Yeah, I, I raced side by side with Paul Menard. I raced side, side by side, wheel to wheel with Donnie Schatz. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's some, there's some big names that I've raced with, you know, they're, 
dad's had a little bit more money and a little more backing than mine did, my dad did. My dad always well, joked. He said, he always said, your biggest downfall in your racing career, and I tell this to Matt also, is your dad doesn't have enough money. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's one funny thing that my dad always said. Funny, yeah, funny, and funny, accurate. Funny, not funny, but, you know. Funny and very accurate is, yeah, the, is, absolutely. A, is yeah. the sad and fortunate yeah. part at the same time. But you do have a very impressive Eagle Trophy sitting back there that I still think is really cool being that it did actually make it through a house fire yeah and yeah, still it made has it through the house fire the, the yeah the bald eagle made her through yeah yeah I, I that trophy the wka national champion trophy was something that was on my mind as as long as i knew about it let's put it that way early days that you know i didn't really know what it was all about but as soon as i was old enough to realize what that trophy was and what it meant that was something that I always wanted to go after I didn't really always have the opportunity to do it um, but as soon as that opportunity presented itself um, we ran I, I ran with it you know right um, and there's there's some people that were involved in that in making that happen that are you know still a fairly big part of my racing stuff now you know right um but yeah getting that getting that trophy um it was very trying that's the, you know that that's the i shouldn't say the first time but that's the one of the first times that i you know they whenever you hear people talk about racing um a point's race you know um it it can be a headache sitting right. down with your calculator and what if i finish here and what if he finishes there um that's the first time that i like sat down and figured out okay if i finish here and he finishes here then i'm gonna end up here and if he finishes there and i finish there this is where i'm gonna end up that was like the first time because I wanted that trophy so bad. Right. Um, and that is a trophy that probably thousands of people chase every year. Yep. And you were the one in 2004, right? 2004, yep. Then you were the one who got it. Yep. So from 2004, how long did it take you to get into a big car, if you will? Um, well, I actually... You got one in 2001. Yep. I, I bought my first sprint car. I saved up all my money when I was a youngster working for my dad. Um, I saved up every dime that I had. Um, when I, you know, all my friends are, you know, 21, 22 years old. That's a, a fun time to go experience life on your own, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was not doing that. I was doing as much as I could to put money in a jar so I could go buy a race car. So I bought my first race car in, in 2001. I was 22 years old. Um, that lasted like six races, um, ended, yeah, ended in one of my, um, one of my, you know, more spectacular crashes, but, um, and then we put that, put the whole sprint car racing thing on hold for a while. Um, and I actually sold everything that I had as far as race car stuff. So everything that I had. Um, I didn't have anything to do with a race car whatsoever and I sold it all and I bought a boat <laughs> and um, I was sitting on the lake one day and the fish weren't biting and I thought it's Saturday afternoon like three o'clock what am I doing sitting on the lake there's one thing that I'm really good at and that's driving a race car why am I trying to catch a fish that isn't going to bite? Basically feel like you're wasting away out yeah, there. It was, yeah, it was not good. So I sped over to the boat landing, put my boat on the trailer, stopped at the hardware store and bought a for sale sign, put my boat for sale on, in the front yard and walked in the house and told my very supportive wife that um, I'm buying a race car again. And she wasn't very supportive of that. Well, she was supportive, but there was there was some definite discussion. 
There's <laughs> definitely some discussion about it. Um, it, it yeah. So um, I bought another race car, um, and that was, you know, in 2005. Um, after I, it was the year after I won the, 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 uh, karting championship, karting championship. Um, it was a 2000 stealth. I drove all the way this, you know, this is for all you younger folk that, you know, don't know anything about, you know, living without the internet. <laughs> um, this was something that I heard through the grapevine and a phone call here and a phone call there and another phone call. I finally found this car that, you know, was going to be my next car. And I had to drive all the way down to Burlington, Iowa, um, to pick it up and drove me and my dad drove down there and bought this car. Um, and oddly enough, you know, the, 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 the cost of the car is back then is, actually still pretty similar to a, a decent roller now you know we paid 6500 bucks for the car um that was that was with wings and everything minus the motor and the seat so we had to get a few things here and there but um brought that car home put it together and went racing the old yeah. orange and yellow car yep orange and yellow orange and yellow number 56 with orange the, yellow and blue yeah with the blue little pinstripe yeah, and blue the blue pinstripe big old 56 bubble numbers yeah that thing was ugly <laughs> yeah it, was, it wasn't the prettiest thing but it was it was a thing it was uh like you told me when we put your your wing on my car and went to houston say she ain't pretty but at least she's ugly yep that's, that's exactly right <laughs> That's yeah, great. That's exactly it. So this is 2005 now, correct? Yep. So as then is 2005, you, are you go racing right then, or is it yep. 2006 yep. that you we really go, get going? We go racing 2005. Okay. Yep. And yep. you're racing Arlington? Yep. Race. We raced pretty much pretty much solely Arlington. Um, you raced with uh, Brandon Gellner. Yep. Raced with Brandon. Um, and this is the first time you were on the track since 2001. Right. In a, Correct. Okay. As so as far as a big car. Yep. At that point in time, is that spectacular crash of 2001 on your mind at all? Oh yes. Yep. It was definitely, definitely on my mind, um, but foggy enough to still go out and run the car the way that it, it should be, be run. You know. And now we'll get more into this later, but I think you're somebody who really can talk about how heavily the mental is involved in sprint car racing. Um, you've had multiple situations of which might put the average man out of commission. Yeah. Um, and we'll get to some of those here in a little bit, but I think you're somebody who can really speak to that. So 2005 then, you're in the car, you're ready to go, you're ready to seat, you're in the seat there at Arlington. How are you feeling at that moment in time? Um, really nervous, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is pretty common, you know, for anybody that straps into a car, you know, and... and I was always told by people like Brett Geldner that, you know, I learned a lot of stuff from Brett and I learned a lot of stuff from Brandon about setting up race cars and driving race cars. You know, those are the, those are the two guys that I have to credit a lot of my racing stuff for, you know, I, I was, I, I pit for Brandon when he first started and the following years when I, when I got my car and, um, If you don't get nervous before you go out to race, you're kind of losing respect for what that race car can do because the, the race car, it can either be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. And as soon as you aren't, as soon as you don't have those butterflies, when you strap in, whether the butterflies are in, uh, of nervousness or excitement, they kind of go hand in hand. And if you don't respect that, you, you, that's when you, it's time to sell it and go buy a boat. <laughs> yep. You know? Do the counter opposite of what you did. Right. And something Mike Steen, who I know you're good friends with, has told me many times is that sprint cars are humbling. Right. They're very oh, humbling. Yes. Yep. And the second you first strap in and go out there, which I can attest to in the six laps I did during a mechanics race it's not even a competitive atmosphere right you know and i still could 
oh, man, I'll never forget that feeling. That's the thing that got me hooked, honestly. Yep. But um, swinging into the season then, 2005, how does that go for you? Does the season go all right? Yeah, we had a we actually had a really good year. Uh, the 2005 went pretty smooth. I got a, a, a win my first year back, which, you know, I, I kind of call that my first year because my actual first year was – yeah it didn't really count as far as I am concerned and for Um, anybody listening who doesn't know Arlington at this point in time was IMCA 360 sprint cars correct this is prior to 305s which came around 2013 so there's still a large period of time here before we get to that portion of time right but um, how do those next couple years go for you then Um, so the second year um, went pretty smooth we get about halfway through the year and this is back when we had the jackpot junction touring series and we actually had a race at down in jackson for the um for the the jackpot junction touring series and we had a we had an awesome car i had i had the car working really well um i was um I had gotten to know Kent Winters pretty well, and I talked to him a little bit about how to run Jackson because this was my first time ever being there. And he told me, he said, if I see you anywhere but on the top, I'm going to punch you in the nose when you come off the racetrack. So, um, and anybody that knows me <laughs> knows that I'm not much for running the top. Yeah, the I'm nickname not... I have for you is Catfish yeah. Bill, the king of the bottom. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm afraid of heights, and being that high up on the racetrack is just terrifying to me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm running the top, and I'm making it work. I, you know, I, I'm doing really well. We're passing some cars. We had a, a not a great heat race, but we're passing cars, and we're making up ground, and then the Zeus buttons decide to fall out of my hood and my hood blows up <laughs> going down the <laughs> coming out of turn two. So then I pull over, um, pull over on the back stretch and the old Jackson track where you could actually get off the back stretch and not, you know, wasn't any big deal. It was just a big flat area out there. Um, they pushed me back into the, into the pit and my dad, I actually think it was my dad and Clint Garner actually, grabbed a ratchet strap and ratchet strapped my hood back down because the, the, the holes were oblonged and I, it, was a, it was a disaster. So they strapped my hood back down onto the car, get me back out on the racetrack, and I, I think we had 25 cars that night, and I started 25th out of, you know, out of 25, and we were making up ground. We were making up ground really fast. There's actually a video yeah. on, on YouTube that you can look up. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's it's pretty good. I'm making up ground, and um, Mike Sargent was my next victim to pass. And I followed him on the top. I followed him in to turn three, and I got out of the gas just for a split second to turn the, get the car turned. And as soon as I did that, the, the cushion was inches away from the wall at this time. As soon as I got out of the gas, my right rear jumped up over the cushion and into the wall. We went and up and over and up and over. <laughs> yeah, it was the notorious nose tail, nose tail hit. Oh. The, yeah, it was painful. But um, that was actually, at, that crash was when I bought my my very first Hans device. Mm. Um yeah, the next day I ordered that. Cause God, kind of amazing to think of a world without Hans devices. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. Wow. Um, so that was that was my second year. So we made it the first year. Didn't have any crashes. Everything was really smooth. Um, second year we ended up balling it up at at Jackson, and I had gotten a car from, and I had gotten this car and had it sitting at the shop, um, waiting to kind of get put together. We got it from Greg Baker, um, and it was all, you know, painted like his, and I was going to get everything all done up in my paint scheme, but we ended up having to put this car together in, you know, like two days so we could go to our next race, which was 
boy, uh, I, I'm glad I was young when I did that because building a car in a day and a half or two days was not <laughs> nearly as much fun as it sounds. No. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I, let alone leaving my wife at home and, you know, spending all my time at the, in, in the race car shop. But, you know, I had, had a kid and all that stuff that goes along with it. So, um, so then we put that, um, that other car together and that was, um, a Maxim. That was the first Maxim that I ever had. And, um, it was the best car that I had, that I had ever driven even to this day. I mean, it, it, yeah, it was, it was spectacular. Um, and actually the car that I'm driving now is the same year as the car that I had then. Oh, so, um, yeah. So that was, uh, that, that era Maxim, if you can find one that's, that's still straight and still in good shape, I would buy it because the 0708. Yeah. 0708 Maxim is stellar. So now there's another crash that I want to talk about because this is the, this is the big one that I still think is, it's amazing that you were able to make the comeback that you did, but I want you to tell me about the big one. Um, and you can start from the beginning because I don't want to ruin any portion of the story. Um, the one that the one that, yeah, 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 yeah the, the the big one. Yep. The one that the the one that changed me for quite some time. Correct. Um. So I don't remember what year it was. 2012. Yeah, I think it was 2012. So one year prior to the 305s coming in. Yep. Yep. Um. We had we had wrecked a car at the end of the year. I don't remember the circumstance. I don't remember what it was. We went up to the swap meet. We stopped at, at Greg Gunderson's shop. Um, and he convinced me that I needed this J&J. So that was the first J&J that I, that I had ever driven. Um, so I went from... Uh, 2000 Stealth to a 2007 Maxim and now into like a 2008-ish um, J&J. And, my, and, and side note, my engine builder is sitting there going 600 horse, 500 horse, 300 horse because I'm spending all this money that I'm supposed to be putting into my, into my <laughs> engine for the next year. <laughs> um, so I buy this car we put it all together, and speaking of my engine builder, Jake at Simply Twisted it, uh, puts a st stellar motor together for me, um, and by far, hands down, the best 360 motor that I had ever had underneath me. Um, so we put this car together. We go to um, Elko. It was the last year that they ran Elko, and we had an average finish the car was fast we just kind of missed the setup a little bit um we get done with elko on friday night saturday we were supposed to race saturday so saturday rained out arlington's test and tune was sunday so we took the car up to arlington um just to put some more laps on it get everything figured out you know this is the first time i've ever driven a j and j um and we're like lightning fast. I mean, this thing is unreal how fast this thing is. Um, we go out for two sessions and it's like nothing that I could do was wrong. You know, we'd make adjustments and it was spot on. Um, come to find out, um, we had a slight kink in our, in our fuel line and it was really, really fast because it was running really, really lean. And we ended up burning a hole in a piston. Oh, so, God. Yeah, we blew the motor up. <laughs> and, and we only got one race into the season. So we pulled the motor apart, put another slug in it, put it all back together. Um, we go up to Arlington. And this was our second race of the year. I think it was the third race for Arlington because we missed a couple because we were out with a blown motor. 
um, running third, I believe. Yeah, I, I was running third. Um, Neil Stevens and um, what's his name? Runs a lot of non-wing stuff now. Uh, Cam Schaefer. Cam Schaefer. Mm. They were battling for battling for the lead, and I was kind of playing it safe, just running in third place. And I noticed coming out of coming into one, they were they had gotten side by side, and I'm like, okay, this is when I got to make my move because one of them's going to pass the other one, and I should be able to make that move coming out on the bottom and where I am notorious for running. Mm -hmm. And I came out of the, came out of turn two and the next thing I know, both cars are completely sideways and upside down and I get into them, ended our night that night. Didn't wreck a car too bad enough to, you know, a couple radius rods, something like that. So we get the car put back together come back and we win we I, you know we had the car we had a car to win the the first night at Arlington put it back together come back to Arlington and we won it was uh, uh, it was a really good win um, and then it was coming up to the Jackson Nationals mm -hmm. and I think it was I don't think it was ASC I no, I it was it was just an open open um, 360 Jackson Nationals deal. So, and it had rained for quite a while throughout the day, and we were watching the weather, watching what was going to happen, and Jackson made the announcement, track's good, we're going racing. So, um, I happened to be down in Jackson for work at the time, and I called my dad, I said, Jackson's racing, let's all you got to do everything's loaded just drive around down i'll meet you down here so they get there we go out for hot laps cars good um had a crappy draw and we we're starting like second to last row and are in like the third or fourth heat so um i knew i was gonna have to go have a good heat race to make it get a get into a transfer spot and um we go out in the in the heat race and <clears throat> we were you know I passed a couple cars right away and I don't remember who I was racing behind but um, I knew I would followed him around for for a lap and a half and he had been kind of running the middle and you know this is back with the old Jackson racetrack and thinking back to when I had raced Jackson previous the, the whole Kent winners conversation I, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm running this thing on, in on the top and I'm gonna run her in as hard as I can. And I didn't realize that, that it was really, really sloppy up towards the wall. And when I went to turn the car in, going into turn one, um, the and being behind that other car, took all the air off my wings and that being in a little bit of a sloppier portion of the racetrack, I turned the car in and it didn't turn and we got off the back side of the corner, you know, anybody that knows Jackson, the old Jackson, it was really, really fast at the end of the corners and we got off the back side and it, it, the, you know, I got on the brakes, tried to slow the car down the best I could. We were actually pitting off of the end, kind of over where the campground is now. Um, and so the car started to helicopter spin in the grass. Um, and then we hit the uh, the hit the I hit the approach the track approach kind of sideways, and it laid the car over on its side. And I hit the um, the Armco barrier on the way outside of the racetrack. Um, I actually hit that with the top of the car, and luckily it hit like nose wing first, and then hit the top wing because I think if it would have hit the top wing first it would probably you'd probably be talking to Matt and not so much me oh. but um, a, li a little bit of that pressure was taken by the front of the car yeah yeah yep, yep. yep. Um, and that one that was the first crash 
that I had had um, where I, I was laying on the, uh, you know, I, it never went completely upside down. I just hit, hit you know, hit the, the top side first and I, I it kind of, it went way up in the air and came back down, but it was still on its side. And I, I remember being in the car thinking, I'm not certain that I'm okay. Oh. And you know, and, and you know, you do the whole finger, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, you know, before, and, and you know, the, the safety crew was there very, very quickly, but, um, and they were very good when they did get there. But um, yeah, that was the first time that I, you know, I, I thought, I'm not certain that I'm like a hundred percent, you know, I've, I mean, I've crashed, I've had many crashes before that, um, which doesn't really make me sound like much of a race car driver. But, <laughs> um, that's all part of the game. You know, it's all part of learning. Um, I had, I had had some, a couple of, a couple of doozies that, you know, rattle your cage a little bit, but this one was, this one was different. You know, it, everything about it you know i just i wasn't certain that i knew where i was i knew what my name was i knew everything was you know i could feel everything but i it just the way that i hit and the way that i felt after i hit just didn't quite feel okay so were the, you at this race yes i was i was actually up in the grandstand what do you remember thinking as this happens I, Here we go again. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> um, but uh, we, I just thought like it was a normal wreck. I didn't think much of it until you. Know, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was like a normal wreck. I thought it was better than most wrecks until you know, grow up and actually get to be in the car and see some of the other wrecks that happened. And I've seen some big hits like that never seen anyone hit that hard of a that a wall that hard in my life my wow. my top wing was perfectly conformed to an armco barrier oh my goodness yeah it was a doozy it was a good holy one. yep now what you did have some injuries from this right um you know shockingly enough um they they brought me to the hospital i was slightly reluctant because you know I had a headache but every crash that I've ever had I had a headache um, it's just part of the part of the game I guess good or bad I guess I don't know right um, but they brought me to the hospital I didn't I didn't have any broke I didn't really have anything that was wrong they did the cat scan blah 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 all the all the fun stuff um, they said that I bruised my or I I bruised my lungs or something with my lungs, um, you know, just from the the belts tightening as fast as and as hard as they did. Um, I had some good burns on my on my shoulders from my from my belts. Um, but did their job though, right? Um, other than rattling my brain probably more than it should have, I I I walked away from it with nothing but about a three-week headache that's good yeah yeah it yeah i've i've definitely yeah definitely sh probably should have ended up worse i don't know why it didn't end up worse but you know it that's there there's a reason why i the why i do what i do in my race car before i go racing um the good lord allowed you to walk away scot-free but there was one major difference in you bill right and what was that difference you know there's and I, I i make a joke about this but i can tell that i hit my head really really hard because i sold all of my sprint car racing stuff and i made the wonderful decision um of buying a modified and and a f this is four bar era. This yeah. is when things are getting really intense in modified yeah. racing. Yep. And you know, I had I had some I had I had some good people behind me that could help me along. Um, and they, you know, people that I could trust. And I knew the information that I was getting wasn't 
leading me astray. Um, so I bought a car and I was really excited about it. There again, I really hit my head really hard. <laughs> I was really excited about it. Um, bought the car from Rosie at Rosie's Raceland. Um, gave me a good deal on it. You know, I bought the car from him. And, you know, we actually ended up taking the, the 360 motor out of my sprint car, putting a carburetor on it and making it into a, you know, making the adjustments we needed to make and turning that into a open modified motor which it was a really good a really good sprint car motor and it was a really good modified motor yeah, so you had some success in the modified as well yep yeah, we struggled like crazy for the the first year at least um not really knowing the adjustments i mean there's nothing that you can take from a sprint car and apply it to a modified right even um, driving style right right um, now going the other direction, I might be getting a little ahead of myself, but going the other direction, um, I would say that it taught me a lot about car control and, um, you don't always have to be wide open Sure. to make your car go fast. Right. Um, driving with both feet, um, is you know you drive more with your brake than you do with your gas pedal on modified keep that thing on the bars right and um you know bringing that knowledge <laughs> to a sprint car um is you know it it, it brings you that much farther forward you know mm -hmm. um i my hat's off to these guys that can wheel these modifieds and do it really good like Clint Haddlestad, I mean, it, it, that's crazy. Clint's I mean, a hell of a wheel man. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. nuts. I, 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 he actually finished second to me the one time that I won. <laughs> hey, um, that's a feat right, right there. That's right. a feat. He was, he was behind me, and if it would have been one more lap, I don't think I would have won it. But, <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, he, was, he was right there, but we just, yeah, we actually made it work. But so are you racing carts at this time? Or yes, when did I, you start racing carts? I started racing carts when I, well, I think I got my first one when I was six. If Yeah, when I was six. Um, and uh, did a few practice sessions here and there. because uh, Dad negotiated with uh, Levi to see if they could bring me out for private uh, tests. Which they were very gracious enough to let us go and do, you know, practice laps in the go-kart track. Oh yeah, while Pretty we have the time here, we we're gonna give a big shout out to the Allens. Um, yeah. We all love you for what you have done for the sprint car program in Arlington, because I'm sure you remember the nights when there was five, six sprint cars at Arlington. Yep. And now, we all do. now next year, there may be upwards of 20, 22 on a weekly night basis, which unbelievable. But back to things at Arlington back then, Matt, you're racing carts and how'd that go for you? Um. I originally bought it with the intent to send him down the same path as I did, you know, race, bring him up racing asphalt carts. Right. But soon found out it's really tough to go asphalt racing when I want to go dirt, track, car, dirt racing. Dirt racing. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't, didn't work. Right. So, yeah, we ended up using this kitty cart for Matt to race his first year because I already had, had it bought. So, and uh, yeah, we we did some practice sessions, and then my first um, my first real race, uh, I I remember this clear as day. I I finished towards the back my first heat race, and then my second heat race actually finished second with like a really like a, a cart set up for road racing. Mm. Um, and uh, I remember Dad. I remember I pulled in, and Dad was like, "Dude, if you would." Dude, if you didn't screw up and and uh, not finish and uh, finish second, you would have made me cry. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, dad moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, my we go out for the feature, and I'm and uh, like I'm confident, but I'm still trying to figure things out. And uh, my 
I don't know what lap it was on or what lap it was, but I get hit in the back and just sail off the top of <laughs> what was one and two. And like me being a little kid, I'm panicking and I just have the throttle wide open, just slamming on the brakes, just putt putting across the infield, just being the tossed. Infield of the big track, not yeah. the little track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being tossed around and, uh, and, uh, then it, then, uh, the thing stalls out and everyone's like, Matt, you all right, Matt, you all right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. That wasn't that bad. Right. <laughs> It wasn't too bad. And then uh, everyone, like, everyone was, I was more embarrassed than, uh, than, uh, uh, scared. Sure. And, uh, I, I thought, I'm pretty sure dad thought that was going to be the end of it. <laughs> but yeah, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there because it was pretty early. Yeah. You know? well, that was like my first race. Yep. And this brings up a good point. You had said something about you felt confidence, right? Mm hmm. I'm going to assume that that came from your old man. Yes. How were you going about teaching Matt to be confident in carts, especially in the beginning? Because it's, at karting tracks this year, I noticed there was a lot of kids who would have the problem of just straight up being unconfident. They weren't scared. They weren't. They just didn't have any belief in themselves. Well, the one thing that I was taught <clears throat> when I first started racing go karts when I was eight years old. Um, I, I raced with NRKA. Um, Kenny Venberg was a very integral part of my life from the time I was eight years old and it, all the way up until today. Um, he told me to go out, just go out and have fun. And he said, if you're not having fun, none of, it's not worth all the effort. So and even even today I put that into my big car stuff if you're not having fun it's not worth it if you're having fun th the really weird things happen if you're having fun while you're driving your race car or working on your race car whether it's in the shop or at the racetrack if you're having fun confidence goes hand in hand with that if you're having fun that's when you're winning races Right. You know, um, if you're having fun working in your garage or your race shop, whether it's whether you got 20 race cars or you got one race car, if as long as you're having fun while you're doing it, um, awesome things happen, you know, and a lot of you, you get confidence from from being a happy person. You get great results from being happy. You you know, positive thought reinforcement, you know, it. it if you have that in your life, you're unstoppable, you know, and that, and that's one thing that I've tried to teach Matt, whether it's driving race cars or when he was playing hockey or in school or when you're at work, you know, turn a bad situation into a good situation. You're the only person that can control it. If you go to the racetrack with a bad attitude you're gonna have a bad night if you go to work with a bad attitude you're gonna have a really bad day at work if you turn it around you're the only person that can turn it around turn it around be happy positive results are gonna happen from that absolutely you know and I genuinely think that the I'm gonna call them the general population individuals who might watch the NFL or the MLB but don't watch motorsports they have no idea how similar that mindset concept is Absolutely. from lining up as a guard on the, on, the, on the football field or being a shortstop in baseball or whatever it may be. It's the same thing in motorsports. It's yep. just the same thing. Well, you know, you look at, I, I, I'm not a real big football guy. Not, you know, that's totally fine, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's not, uh, I, I don't have anything against football whatsoever, but... I'm more of a hockey guy, so I will relate it to hockey. Um, you watch the Minnesota Wild play, they go out and score two goals right out the bat. And, it, I mean, they score five more after that, you know? Right. They go out and get scored against right off the bat. You, you know, you get into a slum. You get into a slum, bad things happen. You know, if you if you 
take those shots on the chin and keep smiling and keep digging and keep working, good things will happen. You know, it's positive thoughts, you know. So that was something you implemented into your karting career, something that was fantastic and a fantastic move by Bill to implement that at an early age because yep. we're seeing it today, Matt. Yep. Well, um, like, well, the then, um, like, in rookies, I was having a blast. Like, I was – I got – Two wins towards the end of my rookie year or my my stint in the rookie class then we moved up to junior ones and uh that's kind of when i got that competitive side and i wanted to win but the thing is like the cart we were using like we were using your old was it your old uh road racing cart motor or was it yeah i think it was a old uh, flathead a really old flathead briggs that we got with the cart that we bought that was probably substantially more wore out than what everybody else was driving. And then we built a clone motor after that. And then, yep. uh, and uh, I, I don't know if, if it was me or, or if it was the cart or the motor, but most of the time I'll say, probably say it was more of the cart. Um, uh, it, like it but now thinking back on it i back then i was a ramrod like i would just drive the thing in as hard as i could and usually end up spinning around and i remember a conversation with you matt i remember you went out you know the track was super duper dry and i said dude you gotta slow down you're going way too fast into the corners and all you're doing is spinning out and you have to slow down and you came in and you told me that the car, the setup was junk and this thing, I can't drive it and blah, blah, blah. And it's that whole deal, you know, dads don't know anything. <laughs> um, because he, Matt argued with me, you know, up and down one side and down the other side. And it was, it was all in about a 30 second conversation just because I told him he needed to slow down a little. And Justin Allen came up and said, Matt, you need to slow down. You got the fastest race car on the on the track right now. All you have to do is slow down. And he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. All I got to do is slow down." And then he went out, and I think I think he won that night. Yeah, that was my that was slowing down. That was my first junior cart. That was my junior two cart win. And junior ones, I only had one podium finish, like top three, and uh, then it was just struggle busting. But then my first uh, my first year into junior twos. We ended up pulling them. I straight up told dad, this whatever is in this motor ain't right because everyone else is just roaring past me when I'm like lead footing it and can, and I don't, I can't even keep up on the straights. So we pulled the motor off and dad was thinking, ah, maybe valve, valve springs and uh, maybe uh, a few things, spark plugs, valve springs, you know, simple stuff everything in the motor was redone besides the block <laughs> yeah we we when we redid it we redid the entire thing and uh then i got my first cart win at toner's lake mm. uh that that was that my first time ever it that's was where only, i got my first win too was toner's yeah that's um, awesome i never raced there but it looks fun oh it, it was a blast like uh i came in from hot lap and it was just only me and michael and mikey steen mm -hmm. and um because there was no other junior two carts, we were considering just pulling the carburetor off and uh, running with the big boys. But we just dis it was we went late in the year, and there was there was some pretty tight points battles going on. So we just had Mikey and Matt race together, and that way they weren't interrupting any of the points stuff that was because sure. it was like the last race of the year. Oh, okay. You know, it, you, we wanted to go more, but it just ended up we didn't have time. And still, kart racing is the same thing as any sort of racing where people are going to grind that hard right. for that track Ab championship. Absolutely, yeah. No matter yep. the fact that there's nothing that comes out of it other than to be able to say you did that. But it is what it is, you know. Being able to say it is is a big deal. Yep. You're and right. um, that was actually the year Dad broke his back, so we actually put a lot of time and effort and figuring out what these carts do and 
how how it does it and like chassis flex i we didn't we didn't really care because we raced sprint cars like and you got to remember i came from racing asphalt yeah go-karts i raced a lot of go-kart stuff but asphalt go-kart you know you set them up straight up i mean it, it, it's completely different i never once other than minimum weight i never put my my asphalt card on a set of scales right. and now it's like scale it every week and then you got staggered tire prep yeah uh, yep. god there's a million things yeah. that now go into and, kart racing and that you know i'm sure that asphalt road course stuff has changed a bunch since i was doing it since 2004 but you know you'd buy it when i in 2004 i was racing a, a 125 shifter and racing it on a uh, the road racing um, national tour and the, the, I mean the shortest racetrack we ran on was three miles long hmm. you know so wow um, you'd put a new set of tires on and there was no such thing as tire prep because they were junk at the end of the race anyway so you <laughs> right. just took them off threw them away right. put a new set on right. so yeah the, I mean and maybe that's changed I, I haven't kept in touch with it but um yeah there was no really for me there was no such thing as tire prep you know right i mean we raced i raced a little bit of oval stuff so i knew what it was and i knew how to do it as far as tire prep goes i knew how to make my own you know that was something that my dad taught me but um yeah the the dirt oval stuff was very very foreign to me as far as a go-kart goes so having matt do this was like alien well, I, to you. I don't know how to make you go faster just drive it harder i guess <laughs> I, you know I, I making the adjustments was very foreign to me you know right and uh then so i got my first win at toners and that that was uh then towards the end of the year i actually started finishing um like second third second second you know like getting a ton of podiums and i was like man I like when I we left this when we left the track for the winter and had everything winterized I was like you know what next year it's gonna happen I'm gonna get my first ever like like trophy that counted because rookies they they hand out uh participation partic awards. participation awards right. exactly right and um great I, modern world we live in yeah and I I couldn't even I couldn't even tell which one it was the one I wanted, which is unfortunate, really. But we uh, then, then in the in twenty nineteen, my first race, me and uh, me and Cole Allen, we were um, we were battling super hard for second, like door to door. And we we were both pretty mad at each other, um, and uh, but we we were, we were all good now once we left the track, and then uh, then the next the next week show up to the track and like dad said it was like like i'm spinning out like i spun out twice in in the same heat race and like six lap heat race at arlington and the thing is like i drove it in so hard in arlington you can't do this i drove it in so hard that like i'd have to lock up the brakes because everyone was running so slow and you can't go up to the top or you can't go in the middle because there's nothing there not not to say anything bad about arlington goat kart track but the thing is that track is super super challenging but also very humbling as well and um then i pull in and dad and dad says you're driving the thing way too hard and i'm like i'm no i'm not the thing's garbage we gotta change something <laughs> and uh then justin's like justin's like yeah, you, Matt, you're listen. Listen to me for a second. You're driving the thing way too hard into the corner. If you did, if you slowed down and actually drop, tried driving the thing in as straight as you could, maybe let the back end step out on entry and stuff like that. You'd probably be really fast. And I was like, you, and he said, you have one of the fastest carts out here, so just it, all it needs to do is be the fastest driver out there. Mm -hmm. And uh then um go out when my when my heat race start third like start third in the feature and um his kid cole is leading the thing and he's over driving the thing and i'm like uh, and i'm like all right justin let's see if it really works 
he slips up a little bit. I pass him with two to go, and I end up winning the thing. And that is something I still love about Justin, how I beat his kid by his advice. Yeah, I still love the fact that your old man was able to tell you that, but it only got to your head once someone else told you that. Dads don't know anything. I still have that problem. But then yep. on the counter flip of that, yep. I'm sure you have told him things that he won't believe, Matt's telling Bill things that he won't believe until somebody else secondarily gives that opinion. Well, I I will have to say there's been times where Matt has told me, Dad, you need to do this with a race car. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. You know, and then we'll, we'll make that change. And it's, and, and it's worked. Mm-hmm. And there's been times when he's told me to do stuff and I'm like, Dude, this is this is a this is big boy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, like, and, and, and you know, I'll, I'll disregard what he says, and then, you know, at the end of the night, we make our own changes, and and then I'm thinking back, like we should have done this and this and this, and then I'm thinking, well, I probably should have listened to my kid. In the first <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah, it's definitely happened before. I have that problem with my old man where. It's like, John, I know this is the case. And he'll be like, well, uh, whatever. And then Steve will tell him the same thing, Steve seen. Yep. And then finally it's going to get through to his head. So, you know, but it goes both ways because I've had the same thing happen with my old man on, on all the flips of that as and, well. And, so. and I'm, I'm the same way with my dad. Um, you know, we'll be at the racetrack and short he'll be like, you know, let's, let's, I think we should, you know, do this or whatever the case may be. And I am on the opposite side going, well, you know, if we don't try something different, then we're never going to move forward. And it usually, you know, staying true to your, to your, what your, you know, what's going on going back to the basics usually works best okay so we're going to rewind a little bit here because we were up to 2019 with the carding stuff but i just wanted to ask you bill about something i'm looking to ask a lot of 305 guys and that was about the transition between 360s and 305s because i've heard a lot of different opinions and a lot of different stories on what they thought hearing about this change what were your first thoughts well to be truthfully honest um i was making the transition into a modified the year that they tra- that they were switching to 305s. Uh, one of my other determining factors to go to a modified was I thought that the 305 thing was going to be the nail in the coffin. Um, they had, there was there was a couple other times. One in particular, um, when Brandon Geldner first started racing was a 305 deal that they ran up at Grove Creek. Um, and that was like a one season stint in the class. I mean, they had four cars and it was, it, it didn't pan out, you know, and I kind of thought that the 305 thing was going to follow that pattern. Um, and I was like, well, I looks like a good time to get out, you know? Um, and I'm, as much as quickly as it gained steam um, at Arlington I I was pretty surprised I was like man I don't I didn't see this coming you know and then you know sitting back watching the sprint cars and I got to strap into a modified was a little bit heartbreaking you know but um And then it's like, well, how do I make the transition back, you know? Um, But I didn't think that the 305 thing was going to take off at all. Like, I thought maybe two years and it was going to be no sprint cars at Arlington is what kind of what I thought, you know? That's the one commonality I hear from drivers is that they thought that that was not going to be something that would pick up steam. Yep. Luckily, it did. Yep. Um, but the one thing that I constantly hear about is that it did bring down costs, which I'm sure when you came back might have been, I don't know how much different it was. You know well, what I mean? In, Obviously, motors aren't $50,000. That's that's a difference. Right. Well, 
They don't have to be. <laughs> That's <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah, there um, are some who may. Right. Um, in any form of motorsports, going back to Matt's go kart stuff, um, my go kart stuff, sprint cars, modifieds, hobby stocks, anything. Any form of, of racing is as expensive as you want it to be. Um, and a lot of it has to is how bad do you want to win? Um, the one downturn to, to driving race cars or being in the motorsports deal is money has a tendency to buy if to buy you a victory. Um, so, I mean, if you are spending a lot of money you on your motors, on your cars, on tires, on, you know, everything, um, it tends to, you tend to have more success than the guy that can't or doesn't buy tires every week or spends $10,000 on their motor instead of $20,000. Um, I had somebody tell me in my in very early in my career um spend your money where it makes a difference a trailer's not going to make a difference uh your truck getting to the racetrack isn't going to make a difference unless you can't make it to the right. um and i think i had a conversation with you about this earlier dan um put your money where it matters where it matters is in your motor and in your tires as long as your car is safe a good motor and this is this is actually information that Brandon Geldner told me this is a, a, almost an exact quote that Brandon Geldner told me that Terry McCarl told him um, a good car or a good motor can make a piece of shit car look really good um as long as it's safe. I'm not saying put any old patched together, bent up, blah, 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 car together, but I won a lot of races in 2015 or 2019 with a 2006 car. Mm -hmm. As long as the car is safe and as long as the car has the ability to do what the car is supposed to do, you can still win races with it as long as you put your money where it matters. And the nice thing about sprint car racing is that it's not like modifieds or late models where an MB custom is very different from a B&B &B chassis. Correct. I mean, now J and J's are different from pretty much everything else, but like Maxim, X and, uh, Triple X, uh, all of these cars are all pretty much the same. They're, yeah, they are very, very similar. But yeah. now something that I do wanna touch on here because this is something that I really love about you two. You both take the safety aspect of sprint car racing very seriously. Yep. I do not mean to talk any smack when I say this, but you are two of the only people that I see at the track on a given weekly basis wearing the under garments of which are fire retardant. Yep. That I think is very respectable and I really appreciate the fact that you guys focus on that because I'm not sure that everybody really understands how important that stuff is until it matters. Well, as far as the as far as the fireproof, fire underwear, fire driving suit, um, there again the the when I bought my first race car, for Monty Smith who isn't with us anymore for unrelated issues, but um, Ronnie Smith told me you spend a lot of money on your driving suit and on your helmet because one night in the burn unit is way more expensive than any driving suit that you'll ever buy. So I, I that's something that I still live by, you know. Um, I wear fireproof socks, fireproof long underwear, fireproof shirt, and a, and a head sock. Um, I was reluctant probably not the smartest thing that I've ever done but I was reluctant to install the fire suppression system my biggest 
my biggest issue that I had with the fire suppression system was being a firefighter. Um, I looked at the aspects of it and I could see what was in XYZ fire, you know, this, this particular fire suppression system. And I could see what was in the one that was right next to it. One was made for a race car. One was made to hang on the wall in your house or in your race car shop. Both of them were going to do the same, virtually the same thing. One cost nineteen ninety five. The other one cost five hundred. And there was very few differences between the two. So that was my big hang up. And I've I I bought a Hans device very early in the game. You know, I when Hans device the Hans stuff first started coming out um i had a three-layer driving suit when all that was required was a was a single layer i wore fireproof underwear before you needed them but that was my big hang-up was why is this why is a fire extinguisher for my race car costing me five hundred dollars when you could buy the same thing for twenty and that really is, though, sadly, that really is the case with everything safety. Right. It's kind of amazing, being that I now have to buy all of this stuff, it's kind of amazing how expensive the fire retardant underwear actually is. Yep. Now, albeit Alpine Stars versus anyone else, you're going to see a $300 shirt and other companies may be cheaper. Nike versus Converse. Exactly. But I still think that that's a situation where you have to pay for heavier safety. And it's like, ah, I don't really know what to think of that. But in a world where those things are very expensive, I appreciate the fact that you guys are taking the time and effort and money and all of those things to do that because I'm always going to be very pro safety. I understand the concept of being a badass that, oh, I just don't care. Well, you don't care until... It yeah, actually happens. Until you're laying in the hospital. Because like you say, a, a night in the burn unit is very expensive, and us three sitting here don't have $200 heads, therefore I'm not going to buy a $200 helmet. Right. You know? Yep. I, I consider my head to be worth more than that, yep. my brain to be worth more than that, being that you only get one. Yep. You know? So I appreciate that. And just throw another plug in there, um, Hinchman driving suits. I... I, <clears throat> I this is my I, I'm on my second henchman driving suit in I don't know like 10 years yep as long as you take care of it um, it will last you it, a long it'll time it'll last you a long time Nancy down at henchman is wonderful to work with um, and I won't buy another driving suit other than a henchman ever again so little little side plug there for Nancy she's wonderful to deal with I've never met her personally um but I've talked to her twice on the phone. Well, more than twice, but um, I've ordered two suits from her. Both of them came to me, um, and it is. she told me, she said, it will look like you're wearing a tuxedo, and it'll feel like you're wearing pajamas, and she is absolutely spot on. It's the most comfortable thing that I've ever put on, um, and they look awesome. One more time on the name and location. Hinchman. Uh, Hinchman driving suits. They are out of Indianapolis, Indiana. There you go. You need a suit. There's a place to go get it. And I think they have a, um, for anybody going down to PRI, I know last year or two years ago, they usually do an open house deal for um, people that are not at PRI. So go down and get measurements. There you go. Get, get fit for a driving suit. Spend some more money at PRI. Absolutely. <laughs> Just like we all go down there to do. That's right. Yep. Okay, so now let's go Let's go back to this 305 talk here because I'm looking at all these plaques and I want to hear about them. Yep. So tell me about 2019 and all the success you had there. 2019 was um, kind of a banner year for us. Um, we, I don't, I don't really know what, where the, what really changed? You Nothing know? did. Yeah, I mean, there was there was a couple of things, a couple of things that we did different. Um, 
one thing, not to throw another plug in there, but um, we we switched from a shelf brand shelf shock to running a factory cane shock. Shout out factory cane. Yeah, man. And, you know, I, I had never talked to anybody at factory cane. This is something that I got from um, a roundabout kind of a way. They ended up in my possession. One of my other sponsors who was going to, with Matt Sharping, who was going to drive our car, had bought, did a buyout, and it didn't work out. His other his business was booming, and he ended up having to go, you know, stay that direction, stay focused on that to make everything happen. So he tasked me with selling his stuff, and that was one of the things that I ended up with was that set of factory cane shocks. Um, you know, never talked to anybody from there. Didn't really know a whole lot about them. Um, put them on the car, kind of guessed at the settings and went up to Arlington for test and tune. And it was like a completely different race car. You know, I mean, it went from bouncing through holes to like racing through holes, through the ruts, you know what I mean? And it, I mean, it was a, a complete game changer. Um, so that was one big thing that we had, you know, when you get something like that and it works that well right out of the gate, even if it fades or even if it's not as good as you think it is, um, that confidence that it gives you in your race car, being able to run that thing wide open and not have to think to yourself, man, is this thing really going to stick? Just run it in there wide open and, and, have the confidence in your equipment that it's actually going to work makes a huge difference. Um, and that was one of the things that, you know, that played into it. Um, and there again, shout out to Jake at simply twisted, put a brand new motor together for us that year. Um, we had a fairly new Maxim chassis. Um, I had put my own wing together cause well, I used to be in the business of doing that. Um, and I think all of the, everything, meshed really well together and um we we started the season <clears throat> at Arlington um and this was the first year our uh Jackson with their new configuration so and they were running weekly every single Friday at, at Jackson and we were really excited for that um we ran Jackson on Friday we ran Arlington on Saturday every single week um and you know, we kind of, I kind of had a, had a goal set for myself to, number one, to win as many as races as we can, which is always a goal for every single year. But one of my goals was to, uh, you know, I had, I had absolutely horrible, horrible track record at Jackson, um, and my goal was I wanted to win one race at Jackson. Um, and we had come close the year before and it was it was still just that dagger in my side you know after we had that big wreck down there and had a couple other crashes down there it, up until then I had raced at Jackson five times and and finished one feature out of five so coming into 19 it was it was kind of a big deal you know we were gonna we planned on racing there well let's put it this way i had planned on <laughs> racing there all year in my head um i i don't think that i expressed that plan to the rest of the crew or my wife or anybody else involved <laughs> yeah there. um we you know we went down and we were you know we were top five car um and things were going good and we were progressively getting faster as we learned the track. And the nice thing was, is everybody was learning the track, the new track at that time, you know? So, um, we, then we, we come up to the Jackson nationals and, um, first night of the Jackson nationals, we finished second and, um, the second night we ended up winning, which was to get my first win at Jackson during the nationals, even though it was a prelim night was unbelievable. I mean, 
still to this day when I think about winning that race it was like man that is that's awesome that's you know? so cool like yeah. uh like Austin Lloyd said, you might not see a happier driver. Man, it, it was something, I tell you. Um, I've never seen you celebrate that hard for a win. <laughs> yeah, it, we. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. And and this is the you know, keep in mind we're coming, uh, coming off of the season where I broke my back. You know, I only got a quarter of the season in um, when we broke up my I, I broke my back in uh, July. Um, July 14th, 2018. Um, so coming, you know, off of breaking my back and having this success that we've had so far and winning that, that race, that one race that we wanted to win was awesome. And then, you know, I had never been, I, I, I don't know how to put it. When I was racing go-karts, I spent so much time worrying about points championship stuff um touched on that earlier in the in the deal but when it came to the sprint car thing i never focused on it i never it it never bothered me i never worried about it never even crossed my mind to even try and race for a championship in in fact i would take weekends off and go fishing go on a family vacation just so we wouldn't have to get tied up into that points championship and 2019, after we won that race down at Jackson, there were, you know, the, uh, a couple of the, of the regulars or uh, the fast guys down there ended up having not nearly as good a weekend as I did. Um, and I just happened to look at the points deal down there, and we were like 15 points in the lead, <laughs> you know, coming out of the Nationals. And it was like, man, I could – be a mid-pack car the rest of the year and you know as long as i show up and keep my nose clean i could probably i could have a shot of winning this deal right you know and that's a conversation i had with at that point <laughs> <laughs> i had a conversation with my dad and with my wife and you know said this is something that i think we should focus on it took a little bit of focus a couple of nights away from running at arlington but it was something that we needed to do because you know getting that ball rolling was you know a, a pretty big deal right and um you know we had awesome success at at arlington we had great success down at jackson um we ended up winning another race down there throughout the throughout the season um racing with ryan voss um that was a lot of fun you know he was leading the race and i ran him down um, made an awesome pass down yep, the back stretch. Yep, had a had a really good pass on Ryan going on the back stretch and ended up winning that one. Um, that was a, that was a lot of fun. Um, and then you know everything in 2019 for one reason or another just clicked. Everything just went the way that it was supposed to go. We had a couple of bang ups here and there. Um, both of them ended up actually being down in down in Jackson, but um, hmm. uh, I know one of them happened at Redwood. Yeah, we did have one. We did have one. Yeah, the the one at Redwood was uh, we we were leading the state points championship, not by a lot, um, and if I wouldn't have gone to this particular race, the second place car, who was Javen Osterman, um, I knew he was going. And if we wouldn't have went, we wouldn't have gotten any points for that particular race, and he would have won the state points championship. So it wasn't a race that I really wanted to go to, but needed to go to. So we went, and there again, falls back into the if everybody's having fun you have great success not that we weren't having fun that night but it wasn't it was a different atmosphere yeah, going there. I, I would i i didn't necessarily want to go racing that night yeah and it was it was one of them one of them things you know redwood has a tendency to be really hard on tires and i it was towards the end of the season and i didn't want to 
burn off a set of tires for no real good reason. So, and not saying that it wasn't a real good reason, but I, I just wasn't a hundred percent into it, you know, and the mental of sprint car yeah, racing, man. Yeah. And we went out, we ended up getting tangled up with a rookie and, um, actually it was the one and only time that I crashed a car and didn't wreck the top wing. I've never done oh. that before. It went all the way up and over and landed back on its wheels, oh. which was the first crash that I had since I broke my back. Oh, uh, first yeah. time I tipped over since I broke my back, which was a little bit unnerving. But then after Fucker moment, yeah. And then after I landed on all four, um, I thought, well, I, that wasn't, that wasn't so bad. Right. Not that I want to do it again, but no. that wasn't so bad. No. <clears throat> so we, uh, and it was kind of funny because we, I get, I went back to the trailer and, you know, I'm getting jack stands out and ready to, you know, start tearing the race car apart so we could drag it into the trailer. And they dropped my car off, and I look out of the tra- I'm up, up in the front of the trailer getting jack stands, and I look out, and I'm like, whose car is that? <laughs> it looks like mine, but. I just tipped it over and it's still on all four wheels, you know. Still on all four wheels. The wing is spotless. Yeah, yeah. I think the wing was straighter after the crash and it was when we started. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But uh, we, you know, so, yeah, we had that little bang up. But um, everything just seemed to click. And we ended up winning the points championship at Jackson, which going from wanting to win one race to winning two races and the championship was awesome. I mean, it was astronomical. You know, I, I, I couldn't be more grateful for, you know, everything that my crew did to, and my wife and everybody involved to help me get that championship was just awesome. And for Todd querying down at Jackson and Doug Johnson for putting that race, redoing the racetrack and, Everything that they've done there was awesome. Quick know? plug to Todd Queering. Yeah. God bless you, Todd Queering. Yeah. Um, I know we're friends on Facebook, so by the chance that you're listening to this and you've made it this far, God bless you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. What what Todd's done for the sprint car racing deal is 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 pretty awesome. Oh and yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. So now this was not one-off success here. This was not just a track championship. No. Was it? We uh, we ended up winning the Jackson. Um, the Jackson championship season championship. And despite my, my, um, uh, little bang up at Redwood, we ended up winning the, the Minnesota race saver, uh, state points championship. And we were, we ended up third in national points. And I think we were only like six or eight points, out of winning the deal. Wow. We were, we were, I was actually in second until the second to last day before the points had to be in and everything was done. And trust me, I checked him every single day <laughs> until that day came. And, um, the guy that finished second got a late season race in and, and ended up picking up a couple extra points and, and beating us on the, on the second place deal. But, um, we ended up third, which man, I couldn't be happier with that. that that's for the, the first time that I actually tried to win a points championship and to get all three of those and have the success that we had was pretty awesome. So yeah, 2019 was, was pretty great. You had a year in 2019 that a lot of guys wish they could have almost over a whole career, right? Yeah. And then that didn't just stop in 19, did it? No, no. We it uh, carried into one of the weirdest years in American yeah, history. 2020 yep. was, uh, was, it was kind of up in the air. We weren't really certain what, uh, what we were going to be doing for racing, you know? Um, there's buy, guys buying, uh, guys buying eye racing just because they thought, well, we aren't going racing. Right. right. Like, yeah, like our absolutely. good friends, Charlie Russman, they bought a, they bought a, how much, how much was that like a lot of money 
But and uh, yeah, yeah iRacing definitely cashed in on the whole pandemic. Yeah. Oh yes. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it For, definitely in, did. in all motorsports. I mean oh, yeah. from from your grassroots all the way up to E NASCAR, E F Formula One. Exactly. You know? IndyCar, IndyCar. All yep. of it. Yep. But. Yeah, that was that was and and you know, um it's a good way to keep yourself sharp. To, you know, keep your hand eye coordination. I absolutely suck at sim racing you've said that mike said that i've heard I, a lot of people say I, that his I, kids are doing the i racing i stuff. can drive the wheels off of off a race car literally and figuratively literally and figuratively <laughs> um <laughs> i've only lost one race one tire off a race car one time it only happened once and that was because the spindle broke and not because i left the wheel nuts loose oh, okay and That's it was a front cool. and not a rear so <laughs> knock on wood yep um but yeah, I can't. I can't drive a sim. I can't do it. I did. I not good at it at all. Well, luckily you're good at real race cars. Right. Because 2020 was definitely a year that showed that. Yeah, 2020. You know, we 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 came into the year. We weren't sure what we were going to be able to do. Um, I entered. Uh, it was a first come, first serve, first guy to sign up, and I think it was the first 20 cars. Um, at a racetrack that I've never raced at down at. Uh, Park Jefferson um, went down to that race and it was absolutely miserable weather. It was, I think the high for the day was like 31 degrees. Oh. Um, like to the point where we're leaving here going, should we drain the water out of the car and fill it when we get there? Oh, yeah. You know, because it was like, it was really cold it was you know it was cold and windy yeah it was as early as it normally would be but for some reason we just that weekend it was really really cold and it was like a 35 to 40 mile an hour sustained wind the entire day oh um we get down to the racetrack and i mean i i had my fireproof long underwear my driving suit a winter jacket, stocking hat, the whole nine yards. And, you know, because of the whole pandemic deal, we all had to wear masks. And it, it was that, it was, <laughs> it was, like I said, it was the worst experience at a racetrack that I've ever had. Um, so we went on the heat race. I think we had a, I don't Did remember we, real, we were, I don't okay. remember well. I don't think we want to remember it too well. <laughs> yeah, I tried to block that one out. I, I actually, most of the time I forget about it because it was like, I can't even count it because the weather was so bad. Um, but we ended up not having a horrible heat race. Um, we made the A. I remember they did run a B and we made the, we made the A main. But the B main, all the other guys crashed out and it yeah, was they, like a majority yeah. vote for like, like everyone in the stands was like, was like throw the checkers there's only like four cars transfer why are you running a b yeah so they literally they're pacing and they throw the checkers yeah it was yeah, it was it was a weird it was a weird the whole evening was weird yeah like a b so, feature then we, yeah then we go out in the feature and the you know it had rained you know earlier in the in the the day before so there was some puddle stuff and nothing was drying because it was so cold um I remember we took the green flag and um, the car in front of us got down into the into the slop a little bit. So when I set the car into the corner, it went and I've ne I've never done this before. It went all the way around in a circle, and I kept going in the same direction that I started. <laughs> it was just the craziest thing. I've just like I said I've never I've, I've never done a 360 and and not had something catastrophic happened yeah. and this was like i was racing on ice it just wore right around in a circle and kept right on trucking wow so um that was our start to 2020 and um you our, actually got lapped too yeah yeah first time in a long time i got lapped yeah you um, came in and Amdahl lapped me and i came in, i remember coming in we were pitted right next to Amdahl's and and i came in and yeah i shook his hand for being the first guy to lap me in like five years and whatever. <laughs> but, uh, so Arlington was forced by our lovely government at the time to shut down. Actually, 
the government. Yeah, we won't get into that. It's a different podcast. Right. Yep. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> next time. Um, but Arlington was forced to be closed for the pandemic deal. South Dakota was not. So Shout out Governor Nome. Yeah. Christy Nome, if you're if you ever listen to this, I you make me want to move to South Dakota. Absolutely. <laughs> Everything's um, better in South or, Dakota. Or just buy Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. Take it over. Or at least the rural part of Minnesota. Yep. Leave Minneapolis. Yeah, the, the area that's nothing, as far as our governor's concerned, nothing but rocks and cows, you can have that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Leave the buildings and whatever he can. The burnt down buildings. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, South Dakota was racing, so we made the decision, um, as many did, to race at I-90 Speedway. Um so we raced there as as many races as we needed to until Arlington could open. Um, went out, went out there first time I was ever there. And that, that there again, it was a, it was a super challenging night. Weather was perfect. We had a great night. Um, we had a good heat race, went out in the heat race and, um, power steering pump. Yeah. We get to the second to last lap and take the white flag going into turn one and power steering pump didn't want to work um so i i arm wrestled my race car around and ended up finishing second for the for the in the feature and it was draw redraw it was first night there um and i don't i know for a fact that i was more focused on my race car i don't remember if i went up and redrew or if i missed the redraw and that was the only one that was left. I don't remember exactly how it went. I like I remember like we were like you nobody went up there I think and uh like so and somebody re- somebody redrew for me. Yeah, Savannah. Yeah. And, and she came Yeah. And, uh, oh. Yeah. So, oh. So we we get second in our heat race and we're starting on the pole for the feature. So, and I thought we just blew a par steering hose. So I replaced the hose. No big deal. Go to start the car and I still don't have any power steering. So it's got to be the pump. So we take the pump off, take it apart, and the inside gear of the power steering pump is completely shattered so what happened was the gear somehow whatever happened along the way the 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 pump part broke and a sliver of that got through the hose the high pressure hose and sliced a hole in it so that's why we had a hole in the hose and the pump was junk so we borrowed a borrowed a pump from brandon allen put that on and he's like I know it leaks like crazy, but it'll get you through the night. So we put it on, started on the pole. We ran around second behind uh, Nate Tre- Waller. Yeah, uh, Trevor Waller. Trevor Waller, yep, yep. Um, ran second behind him for five laps or so. Um, it felt he, like an eternity, though. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> like, it was just back and forth, back and forth. He would gain some, you would gain some. And he was running kind of middle of the top, and I was, there again, I was committed to running the bottom. That's where I had my car set up for. Um, and the top just started tri- to trickle away, and then the, the bottom stayed awesome, you know. And um, <clears throat> we just kept plugging away. And he got a little crossed up coming out of turn two, and I passed him around the back stretch and never looked back. And we won that one the first time we were, had ever been there. And outbeat, I think, the who was the champion there? Was it Ballinger? It very well could have been. Yeah, have been. Be, but I know, I know Dusty started, he had a bad redraw. And, and he, he, started, he started like 12th. And, and, and we. On restarts, I've never seen a guy do this. On restarts, he would put, everyone would just be in the middle and cheat the cushion he would put that thing so high up and that thing would just like i it's it was unreal the thing would just wing over like it was similar to what 
Brett Allen was doing at Arlington, it would just wing over and he would get a crap load of drive coming off the corners. It like it was unreal to watch it, but then and Dusty's a heck of a driver. I oh mean, yes, that, that's 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 one guy that if he starts in front of me, I'm probably not gonna pass him. Yep. You know, it's <laughs> it's he's he's a tough guy. He's he's fast and competitive, and you get those two things working together, and he's he's a tough guy to beat. Oh yes. You know, you put him out front, and he's a tough guy to beat. You put him anywhere in the pack, and he's a tough guy to beat. But mm-hmm. um, we were able to hold him off, and we won our first race. Um, I think we ran there three more times mm-hmm. before Arlington was opened up, and then Arlington opened up, and I actually got my first lap in a sprint car. <clears throat> yep, yep. Matt raced, ran his first lap in a sprint car in my car at Test and Tune. Um, Albeit pretty cramped up, but <laughs> yeah, well. Then again, I'm like how much taller than you are. Right. Arlington opens up, finally. And they put together a 12-race championship series. Um, And I think we started out, I'm not, I don't remember if we won the first night out or not. Um, But, you know, the the goods and bads of IMCA um, is the better you do, the farther back you got to start. Um, I personally, I think that needs to be re looked at and it may be, I don't know. Um, but I'm just a stupid race car driver. I, you know, I've never, Said I was a promoter, never want to be a promoter. And I, we love everything the IMCA is doing. God bless the IMCA. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But it just, you know, for the guys that are racing and finishing up front, you know, it, that's one of the downfalls is you got to start in the back, which probably puts, a, in in theory, it gives us a, supposed to give a better show because then the fast guy's got to run through the pack and, Everybody likes seeing people pass cars. And luckily, the IMCA point system is set up to reward you for showing up rather than winning. And Correct. Not mm-hmm. a bad thing, by the way. I, I, I do have an appreciation for that. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so, I don't remember where we finished the, the first night, but it, it our, our success from 19 just continued on um we had a 12 race series we won um six out of 12 at arlington won the one race in south dakota at i-90 um so we had seven wins on the season um we won the track championship at arlington which i had been racing at arlington since 2005 yep right? yep um and that was the first track championship that i had ever won at arlington so it, it, it it's not that it doesn't come it, it doesn't come easy right at by by any imagination oh god and i have to tell people all the time you know just because Ar- just because arlington doesn't have the name that cedar lake has right it doesn't have the name that Houston's has right or wherever that place is still a place where you need to be fast every night or you're going to get your doors blown off. Yeah. yeah. And, and Trevor it's, and Service, it's, Bill Johnson, Mike Steen. I mean, even guys like Bruce Allen back in the day and Neil right. Stevens, all those guys. Kurt Lund. Yep. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's not an easy place to get around. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, you can't run the top all the way around. I mean, you can run the top coming in, but if you're running the top coming out, in certain places on the racetrack ain't good you you're not gonna be yeah mike yeah, yeah. you hear that mike <laughs> you hear that you listen <laughs> all right good because i'll never forget the time that bill passed you on the bottom all right very good and he has passed me mike steen has passed me on the bottom but i and and i swear at myself every time <laughs> that he passes me on the bottom so anyway 
enough about Mike Steen. Yeah, right. <laughs> Just, Correct. No. Um, so anyway, um, Arlington isn't an easy place to, to win races at. And we, we got six that in, in 2020. Um, we won the championship there. And we won the state points championship again, second year in a row. Um, and yeah, we had an awesome 19 and an awesome 2020. And that makes up for the terrible year that 2020 was, you know? Right. Absolutely. Right. So now 2020, great year. 2019, phenomenal year. Now we come to a big transition in both of your lives. Mm -hmm. And that's where Matt gets into a sprint car. Mm -hmm. 2021 is the year you'd had a great successful year in go-karts. Yep. How are you feeling coming into the first season in 2021? Um, at first, I was pretty anxious. Like, just working on the car and just getting to know the car. And, and like you say in your videos, what everything does, what it's called, what it what it does on the racetrack and and just the gist of that getting to know it is will make you it'll either do one or two things but i th think the f first one would be it will give you confidence that although it looks simple spindly and um like i don't know compared to the stock car stuff with their big bulky stuff weak like it like it will Everything on the car is made for it to go as fast as possible around a circle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. But going into it, like I did countless hours on on my video game uh, just to kind of get me prepared-ish for like what a car with suspension does. Because before with the go-kart, that's the big thing. They don't, go-karts don't have suspension. So, and it is nice how much of a transition you can have from karting to sprint cars versus karting to modifieds, for yep. that example. I mean, yep. a go kart is essentially just a miniature sprint car without a suspension package. So yep. That is a nice feature to have. It, exactly. And um, that was one nice thing that I, like, before I was thinking, well, after I get out of go karts, let's just go into stock cars. When dad bought the modified, I was like, nope <laughs> nope we aren't doing that and, and matt you know matt's been around sprint cars i've had a i've had a race car in my garage ever since he was born so but he just because he was around him and you know he subconsciously was probably taking in more than he knew he was but there was still a huge learning curve because he didn't know that he knew it but he didn't quote unquote know it yeah I mean nobody knows it until you do it mm -hmm. how much time it takes to not only put a car together but to the the weekly maintenance I mean it it's a if you're going to do it and do it right it's a Monday to f well, if you're racing Friday, it's a Monday to Thursday deal, and you load Thursday night, and you go racing on Friday. Mm -hmm. And he saw it, and he helped me with a lot of stuff when he was younger, but he still didn't. There's still so much that I did when he went inside, or when he had to go to bed, or when he went to school, that there's so much that he didn't see or know. Until, until I, you actually have it. Mm -hmm. And gain that respect for the process. Right. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And, and there, was, there was many early stages. There was many um, heated discussions. We oh, can, yes. We sure. Can, we can, we'll say it. that that's a really good way of putting it. About, I'm, I got my own car to work on. You know, this is, this is your deal. So if your deal isn't 100%, that's the way you're going to race it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the only way that Matt was going to learn, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. not, and I'm not saying that he didn't, he wasn't willing to put in the time. Um, and I think it was more 
there again, dad not knowing everything and dad not, dad thinking he knows everything. Um, it's a generational gap. Though, absolutely. Too. It mm-hmm. is 100% a generational gap. Yep. We look for the ability to be like, okay, that's good. Whereas right. you'll make sure it's good. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just the difference in generations. Yep. Right. You know? um, and, you know, there's, there's certain things that I believe in and there's certain things that I do that, that, you know, I'll never go to the racetrack without washing my race car. I don't yep. care if it's just got some dust on it. My race car is going to be clean because there's, there are sponsor names on that race car. And if those sponsor names aren't shiny and clean and looking nice, I'm doing that business an injustice and not, and not promoting them as good as I have the ability to. Right. And that's not something that I'm willing to, to waver from. Right. You know? My whole deal in, in sponsorship stuff is and something that I've, you know, tried to, to to teach Matthew and I and I think that he's you know he's seen that, known that, and has the the same what's the word I'm looking for? The same mindset respect mindset um, as I do that you know, these guys are, are, they're not only helping us out, but they're, they're putting their name on us. And if we can't promote that a hundred percent and bring as much business to them as we possibly can, it, it, it ain't gonna last long. Right. And there's, there's sponsors on my race car that have been on there from the day I started racing sprint cars to this day right now. Unbelievable. And 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 as we talked before, I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Right. So I've been doing it for a long time. Right. So um yeah, I gotta I gotta thank all my sponsors for everything they do for me. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we'll get to that point yeah. of sponsorship. So we'll right. we'll come back around to that. But so Matt, let's talk about this is a big thing that I've wondered, and I, not to hype your father up too much, but he's Bill Catfish Johnson. Mm-hmm. You had some shoes to fill. Yep. Was there pressure in that? Absolutely. Um, I knew my dad had, like, a really, he was, he made a really big name for himself from all the years he's been racing. He's won in just about anything he drove, and I was, I was pretty nervous about that and I think that nervousness kind of carried over to my first actual seat time in my own car and with during test and tune and uh like dad was saying take it like take it smooth take it easy you know you don't you don't need to light the world on fire it's test and tune you got nobody to impress yep that's his exact words and uh I I was thinking that, and I was like, well, what if I don't impress myself? What if I'm not like Dad? Mm-hmm. What, if, what if I'm just some slow poke that just, like, idles at the back of the field? So Mike's team. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and we get, go- <laughs> get going. So I get pushed off. No, Dad tests out my car, and it's running a little bit rich and I was I thought something was wrong with the motor and, but um, we just ended up changing the pill and it cleaned itself out after the few test and tune sessions I did but like I just when I was strapped in it my mindset changed like it was like like I'm gonna go as comfortable as I I'm gonna I want to find my limit right away and see if I can stay there and if I'm and or even drive the thing at my limit and i got on the gas like full like just dumped the thing all the way down to the floor and just kind of stayed there i i don't know and uh at and you can see this in some of my old gopro footage on my instagram 
I was a lot, I saw it a lot on the wheel because the thing would drift here and there. But um, like going down the straightaways, I would just saw, just saw the wheel and then just crank the thing and then point, be pointing to infield tractor tire, which that, drive it like a non wing car. Yeah, pretty much. And um, and uh, then when I just then it kind of clicked when it was the my the f- fifth race of the night or no wait um yeah probably around the fourth or fifth race of the night um the fourth race i was i was behind mike um me and dad actually had a pretty nice battle going on and uh i got him coming off of four he got me back going down the back stretch and chopped my nose off pretty good <laughs> um because he knew that he knew i had the bottom but um then he I'm not gonna let you yeah i know exactly <laughs> i i knew you weren't gonna let me pass you that's the last thing you want yep and um then ended up having a slight uh malfunction had the power no not the power steering uh the fuel pump fall off um because our fuel pump wasn't put in a, yeah the clamp wasn't tight so it backed off just enough to where the yep. drive wasn't engaged anymore yeah oh. and uh which happened to me down at eagle when i had this motor in oh that's right yeah we'll get and, to eagle mm-hmm. yeah and uh then it it was kind of frustrating and that and then we went on our fishing trip up at uh the cabin mm-hmm. and, and what, we, what time of the year is this this was towards the beginning like uh yeah August, uh, June, June, end of June ish. Oh, so yeah. way before you guys knew you had a shot at the rookie of the year stuff. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, um, does this now not to press any nerves or buttons or anything, but were there any weekends where you could have made up that, what was it, 11 points? Ah, uh, it was 11 point well, difference, I think. The, the, yes, there was. There was, um, one night, the first night in Ada. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt got ran into, got spun around, and his his motor. They pushed him back off, and for one reason or another, I don't know why, but it was running on seven cylinders for absolutely no reason. Um, and you know we're five hours away from home, so I. You know they pushed him off, and he can't pass two laps in a row and it was running on on seven cylinders i'm like what is going on here um so they had a red flag and i went out and talked to him and i said is this is the motor not running right what's what's going on does it seem like it's getting better i don't you know i have no idea why this thing was running the way it was so instead of just having him restart it and get the thing cleaned out and that's all it ended up being it was just it was loaded up from spinning out dumping a bunch of fuel in i pulled him off the track mm-hmm. cuz i didn't want to wreck i didn't want to risk wrecking a motor early in the se- early er in the season and then not have him race the rest of the year well either have him not race the rest of the year or not me not race the rest of the year um so that's one that we that we, that we probably could have gained some points. And now just for clarification, for anybody who doesn't know, I probably should have said this earlier, Matt did finish fourth in the National Rookie of the Year points um, behind three guys. I believe two of them formerly raced 360s, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I think so, so essentially, if you really want to get deep about it, Matt got second in the yep. Rookie of the Year points. Yep. Um, I think it's a little ridiculous that somebody can go race – 360s or 410s even for that matter you can go race the world of outlaws for 20 years and then you come into the imca for the first time and can be considered a rookie yeah donnie shots could run a 305 race saver and rookie. win and and actually sign up as a rookie yep and i think that that's i mean how do you how do you fix that i have no idea i mean i guess you'd really have to have a very complex system to just to establish who a rookie is which at that point it just gets to be a little bit too much but, yeah but still 
you had a phenomenal effort when mm-hmm. it came to that. And so that's what we're speaking on at the current moment is any portion there that could have been made up. Mm-hmm. Um, pro- uh, and I agree with Dad. Ada was a big one. Um, we, and, uh, like, we probably could have ran. If The thing is, like, early on in the game, like, there was one time where I spun out all, no, where I jumped a wheel my second night out. Um, and guys were all on, were just wrecking it everywhere and i tried going through the middle try to split it and the guy to the inside of me turned up and i ended up jumping his right rear i probably should have ended up on my lid um yeah and that's a that's you know that's an on on track incident that you're never going to be able to yep you know the the to be truthfully honest the his first dnf when the, the fuel pump slid back i mean that that's you know something that i tell everybody that's starting out in racing something that i've always driven home to matt is your race isn't won at the racetrack your race is won in the in the in the garage mm-hmm. in, in, at the shop you know I, I, and and you know if we i've never ever ever had that issue before happen and it, it, it's one of those it's one of those things that I check every single time now. Just put a right. 316 wrench. That'll something that'll never happen again. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's what I thought the first time. Yeah, well, yeah, true. <laughs> um but that that's one of those things that that should have been caught either at the trailer or at the shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. And there there's, you know, he was running third. Yep. He was running third that night. So that's, you know. Right. Uh, the the potential to add 20 points right you know i mean he could have won by he could have won the the rookie of the year thing by 20 points if that wouldn't have happened mm-hmm. right right so and that, you theoretically know. you could have made points up at eagle but mm-hmm. that wasn't a place you raced at bill this was your first year at eagle if i'm not mistaken right yep first time yep now Where? i am and anybody who's close to me knows this i'm obsessed with eagle i've only been down there once I love the place. I love the facility. I love the atmosphere. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, I, that's the first time that I raced down there. Um, and not that I didn't want to race there. Um, I always wanted to race there, but kind of going back to what I had mentioned before, you know, we would purposely take weekends off, you know, not only did, take us out of the points championship so we didn't have to worry about it but to you know just get that weekend efficient in or it's a a a good you know have a break and it being you know being there's there's goods and bads to that race being over labor day weekend and one of the bads is you know we always look forward to having that weekend off sure you know Mm -hmm. um and being that Matt was being as uh, having the success that he was having this year, I thought to myself real early in the season, I'm going to race down here this year because it might be the last time that I'm going to have the chance to do it by myself. And not that I wanted to do it with, you know, not that I'm Lightning McQueen and I want to be do everything on my own here, but yeah, um, it, it's definitely a team effort. But when I say by myself, just my car. Right. Um, because I know next year, Matt's going to want to race down there. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, he got to go race all the North stuff. I'm going to race here, and I'm going to race it, and he's going to leave his car at home. Which, well, albeit, was a good, probably a good decision. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In, ter- well, in terms of how things went, because you did have success down there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had we had good success down there, um, and it and it actually ended up working out pretty well because the week prior, um, I had some motor issues with my motor, and I ended up stealing the motor out of Matt's car and putting it in my car. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and which gave me a, a, a good chance to run his motor because you know I had other than that test and tune I had never driven his you know had never run his motor so I didn't know what it was capable of you know all I could go off of is what he was telling me and not that he wasn't giving me great information but uh rookies information versus a veterans information is farly different most of the time and being able to drive his motor and tune it a little bit better um you know makes a big difference for later on in the rest of the the rest of 2021 and moving forward right absolutely so it was yeah we had we had good success down there um you did make the a in one one of the nights if i'm not mistaken the first night yep the first night which by the way for anybody who has not been to eagle first of all one of the most amazing sprint car shows on the planet I'll forever say that. I haven't even been to Knoxville yet. Have never not not been to Eldora. Nowhere. Biggest sprint car event in the United States. Bigger than Knoxville. More cars. More more cars are registered at Eagle than there are at Knoxville. And when you pull into the pits, for the first probably 250 yards of sight, you're only gonna see $150,000 stacker trailers. These guys show up from Texas and Ohio and Pennsylvania. They pull from California. This is not an event where you just go down there and make the A. I mean, there are guys, Mike Steen is one of them, who have run down there countless times and had had have more bad luck and bad experiences than good ones. And for you to go down there your first time and make the A, I mean, that's a phenomenal accomplishment. Yeah, we had a the the. We had a we had a good draw. That was and, and drawing having a good draw down there is is that's having luck on your side when you pull that pill is is a big deal. And I'm and, really glad you bring this up because this is one place where I believe the IMCA should make a change. Run qualifying at Eagle. As, it, yeah. If they can do it at Knoxville, if they can do it at Eldora, if they can do it for all these massive shows that they have for hundred and seventy five thousand dollars, I think you could probably qualify people. And they did it at Husets at the the last race at Husets. Matt Matt raced down there for for that deal, and it, it's smooth. I mean, it went really really smooth, really really quick, very easily done. Um, you can pull a ninety nine. So the pills go from one to two hundred. You can pull a ninety nine day one, and on the second day, you have to draw a pill between a hundred and one and two hundred. That's why the pill system is terrible. Yep. And mm-hmm. again, God bless the IMCA. We love everything you're doing, but I just think that that really can put you in a terrible position. Even even if your car is fast, you just that's not a track where, like in a heat race, you can go from sixth to first very easy. No, you're, yeah, you're not going to do that. No, nope. nope. especially not during the big shows because nope. the track changes so heavily and, so quickly. And and you're racing with the the best race saver has to offer right mm-hmm. and and drukey winning it this year is a good example right he's a dog and everything he drives absolutely I mean, he's a stud yep yep so these are not guys to mess around with mm-hmm. so we were lucky to draw have a have a good draw the first day um put us outside pole in heat 10 yep. and nine nine i thought it was 10 but I'm, 10. i'll take your word for it he pays way closer attention you're right he does <laughs> yeah um yep. So nine or ten, we'll go with nine. Um, and I got a really good start. Ended up winning the winning the heat race, which put us starting ninth in the A main, the first A main, the first night. Um, took the green flag, had a fairly decent start. Um, my nerves were a little bit on edge first time. I mean, this is. Practice day got got rained out, so and we had what twelve lap heat races, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I ran so I ran twelve laps in my heat race, and I ran probably combination between the two practice sessions that we got on the on that day earlier in the day. I probably had 
15, 18 laps total. I think they gave six laps from the leader of hot laps. So right. yeah, that's probably realistic. I mean, so, um, you know, and the, the, I didn't have a lot of time under, on my, under my belt and didn't know how much the track was going to change. Didn't know if it was going to stay heavy, you know, knew no characteristics of the racetrack other than what I was told. Mm-hmm. So we, with the help of Matt and Brandon Geldner and my dad, we put the best setup that we thought was going to happen. And the car was really good. Um, and the first day, if anybody else was there and they remember the first day at the nationals this year, it was, it was a wreck fest. I mean, it started from the very, the drop of the green of the first heat race they didn't even make it to turn one, and the and they were crashing cars. They had a flip counter going within about the first five laps. Yep, yep. It was <laughs> and it was they were they were wrecking cars left and right. So, I had Matt talking into one ear, telling me, "You got to go to the top. The top is the only place to be." And I'm, you know, me being Mr. Bottom, Catfish um, Bill. Yeah. Boy, an eagle is a track where the top can bring yeah. some crazy momentum. Yep. You yep. see these guys diamond the corner and they rip the right rear yeah. off the thing and drive you, down the hill. You run that racetrack, running the top at that racetrack is way different than running the top anywhere else. Oh, it, yeah. It's, I mean, it's entry to middle of the corner is the m- most crucial part of that racetrack on both ends of the racetrack. And if you can't figure that out or you don't have the confidence or whatever to run it in on the top, which I struggle with, I'll be the first to tell you, um, running the top is essential running at Eagle. And I didn't have the confidence the first night to run the top. And I went down to the bottom it was working there was plenty of moisture down there it was i was i was able to pass a couple cars i was in i was well within a transfer spot on the first night and i for the second time in my entire sprint car racing career i hit an infield tractor tire and that took us out bent the drag link to the point where i couldn't steer it so it took us out of the transfer which was kind of a major bummer right you know i i felt like a serious idiot and i you know stuff happens in race in 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 this racing deal and i tend to hang my hat at the end of the night and not beat myself up too bad about it but boy it was tough to not beat myself up with all the work that we put into the heat race, you know, the little, the few laps that we had in, we were sitting, I mean, we were, we had her, we had her locked in. All we had to do was be patient. And I lost my patience and tried to get to the inside of somebody and went a little bit farther than I should have. And, you know, we were having fun, but the nerves got in the way of my fun when I was, lining up to go racing you know and it that, that's what happens and i told and i told you straight i told you straight up dad like like all though i wasn't in the car i told you straight up dad it it may look like if you don't do it i'll do it right <laughs> like at be like it like i yeah i it might have been that it was a bigger event and it was the Eagle Nationals, but I was pretty, I was pretty uh, upset slash disappointed because I thought first time here, let's make the A, let's let's show them what the Johnsons are all about. And uh, and just for context here, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but they have three prelim nights or three attempts to make the main event. They take the top ten cars from three different nights, yep. and then they run three wide. So if you win the prelim night one, you're going to start on the very inside of those three rows. So this would have been the very first night of that would have been that main inside row. So even if you finish 
10th, you're in the show. Which making the main event at Eagle is the only and should be the only you know thing you want to do. It winning it is something that you may come across if you get the chance, but making it is definitely a big deal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, making making it starting dead last. Yep, starting in 30th. the in, in the on on Sunday. Yeah, is yeah that's a big deal. Yep. Um. So we missed our opportunity the first night. Um, bonehead move, lost my focus, whatever. Move on. Um, so I drew really good the first day, so I got to draw a hundred or higher for the second day. Um, drew, which I thought was pretty good. Oh, race of champions, forgot about that. Um, we being that we had won some uh, a championship, we were qualified to run the race of champions. Um, being that I hit a tractor tire, I had to make some changes. I had changed, basically, we changed the whole front end in about, I don't know, six minutes. Well, not the whole front end. We had to change the tie, the tie rods, drag length, uh, uh, I think one of the wheels, but it was like... Almost everything except for the axle tube. Yep, yep. But the every, axle tube every, was pretty bent up. Yeah, the axle tube was still... Not severely, but pretty bent. <laughs> um, we changed everything but the axle tube and the spindles. Um, and there's a uh, well-known rule that I didn't know. You're not supposed to enter the racetrack on the back stretch. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that rule. Yeah, he was, he was pretty tough with yeah, that, too. Yeah, I must have missed that memo. Yeah. Um, I was probably talking during the pit meeting, which you probably shouldn't do. <laughs> yeah. um, so, race of champions, I was in the first heat race for race of champions, and we were scrambling to get this thing together, and I knew the only way that I was going to, because they, I could hear them in my, in my headphones, they were going into turn one, and... They, they were going green and I knew the only way that we were going to get this done is if I pulled out on the backstretch yeah. and I pushed I, they pushed me out on the backstretch and honestly didn't know that that wasn't something that you could do <laughs> and they didn't kick me off the racetrack I was really surprised that I didn't get yelled at through my through the receiver but they actually went back yellow and made me line up in the back which I was starting in the back anyway um, but I wasn't able to really drive the car the way I needed it to because, number one, we made all those changes in such a short amount of time, my brain wasn't quite in it, and with that, with the axle tube being bent a little bit, the handling wasn't where it needed to be. Right. Um, but we at least got back out on the racetrack, and it was it was – uh, full effort from Matt, Brandon, my dad, the our neighbors, the Nalons, they man, they they dropped everything that they were doing and came over and helped us, which is awesome. That's um, the magic of dirt racing. Yeah, that that especially with the 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 three hundred five race saver deal. If you got something that's wrong, anybody and everybody in the pits is coming to help you. Oh yeah. You know, yep. so which is awesome. So, go to night two. We had to draw a hundred higher, and I think I was like one in the one twenties, which is pretty good um, compared to compared to one ninety. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, I think we were close to being in the same neck of the woods for as far as heat race wise. I think we were eight, nine. 10 something like that yeah we were in nine again um and took the green flag we were mid pack ish um passed a couple cars right away had a really good race going with our with the guy that was pitted next to us our neighbor um just had you know and it was one of them one of them races where i knew i screwed up the first day just go out and Go throw everything at it and go have fun yeah. you know and and i ran the top 
shockingly, I made it work really well, you know, we, and I was having fun. Something I'll never forget. Right. All of us screaming. Right. Yeah. Bill's running the top. Yep. Yep. Um, I got a new nickname that weekend or after that race. Uh, we'll talk about that later. <clears throat> um, and I was passing our neighbor for third um, in the heat race and the fuel pump slid back again for the second <laughs> time. <laughs> Never had it happen before and this is the second time. <laughs> fuel pump slid back and we ended up DNFing in our heat race which put us in the E main for the features. Um, that was a big Arlington Boy Fest if I remember correctly. Yep. That might have been Saturday but one of those nights there was an e-main with like all people from Arlington. Right. Right. That right. was uh that was the final night. Yeah, that yeah was I think that was. It was yep. it was like everybody that races week yep. at Arlington. Yeah. So we uh ended up running the E main. I think we missed the transfer by well, like one or two spots going moving forward, but there again learned a lot. You know, I was able to run the top and be comfortable doing it. Um got really good notes for going down for next year um and really look forward to going down next year and hopefully you know with this this uh imca allowing Cusets to run qualifying at the end of the year hopefully that is the maybe new, something can be implemented quote unquote new normal right hopefully right we get a lot of new normals in this world now. Hey, so man. Why not bring you know, another one in? Yeah, huh? exactly. That's one of my least favorite sayings. But hey, if it's the new normal yep. for 305 sprint car racing, I'm all wouldn't, for it. Wouldn't be terrible. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Quick here while we have the opportunity, because I know a lot of people from Eagle. Ironically enough, a lot of people from Eagle follow me on YouTube. Shout out to Eagle Raceway and everything you guys are doing. You guys are phenomenal. Even the track workers, how quickly you guys get people off the track, get them bumped off, everything phenomenal great yep. show love what you guys do down there even on the week-to-week -week basis because i've talked to some drivers from down there and they only have great things to say so mm -hmm. shout out to eagle raceway uh, now moving back to matt something i really want to talk about is the fact that you as a rookie and now this was an interesting year at arlington and i'm sure you can attest to this there were three or four rookie sprint car drivers who got wins you hannah zach foch Fish. i don't want to mess up his name Fish. Fish. um and that's it, I think, right? Yep. So three drivers getting a rookie rookie win at Arlington is pretty impressive. But something that I really thought was cool about your win, and if I remember this correctly, I think your mother posted a Facebook post about this. But you see you on the car, mm -hmm. excited about your win. Yep. And you can see the other drivers yep. that are a part of that 305 series behind you. Yep. That must have been pretty cool to have that sport like that. Absolutely. Like, like previously mentioned justin allen and javen they walked up right behind right up to the fence and uh congratulated me on my first win i like on like and they're one of the first two people i talk to when we show up at the racetrack just super awesome guys like i can't say enough about them like they're they're just awesome to be around and awesome to hang out with right and and it, it's the top four cars that go in for anybody that doesn't know, it's the top four cars that go into the infield. So for post race tech. For now. post race tech. Mm -hmm. So um, Matt won, and he was in victory lane. I obviously went because it's my kid, and I felt obligated for some reason. Uh, right. Yeah, weird. I know. <laughs> and so keep in mind, top four. The only other there's two other cars that are in the infield, and the other two cars came to watch him get his trophy. That's a, that's a pretty awesome deal. It's not like there was two out of ten or two out of you know two out of twenty. It was the only two cars that were in the infield. They both came to watch him get his trophy, and that yeah, that's a pretty awesome deal. And yep. I'm sure once he got back to the pits, there was just an explosion of celebration. Oh from, yes, from the rest of the three. Oh crew. yes, like it was. It was everything minus the champagne. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, absolutely. Um, like it was like overwhelming. Like, cause I, like, my number one dream since I was like since I was showing up to the racetrack, 
Like since you wanted to race a stock car. Yeah. <laughs> since you wanted to race a stock car. Since right. since I was playing with my little Hot Wheels cars on the grandstands, one thing I wanted to do was just win at Arlington, win at the track I was raised at. Right. And uh, to accomplish that on the big track, on the track I watched when I was a little kid, it it was emotion in the interview you could actually hear me get a little choked up because it it was something i've wanted to do forever i right. like i've dream i've like most people say they've dreamed about it like no i've literally dreamed about it right <laughs> crawling on top of that car and celebrating it it is i think matt's first time to the racetrack i think he was about a year old no i think you were farly younger than that <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like three or four months, probably. Yeah. When you riding a little backpack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. That it's just been a long time dream, and to accomplish it, 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 it and to have dad, to have dad behind me and pull up beside me down the back stretch and congratulate me, it is, it is, emotional. Right. Yeah. And Absolutely. Then, then to put more pre then to put um pressure on it and it's like uh there's a the sponsor for the night apx construction um rick lynn can't thank him enough for hopping on the car like after my first win i that is awesome that's awesome man. and they he pull has his hand out and says congratulations we'll meet i'll meet you at the pits at the end of the race and i'm like and i'm like Oh, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Picked up a sponsor and his first win. Yep. There you go. That's awesome. Not many people do that. No. Yeah. So, well, I think you both have had, Bill, I think you've had an unbelievable racing career. I think sitting here looking at this is one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen. And I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to sit down with me and tell your story, talk about all the things you've been through, all the ups and downs. Um, and letting people know kind of how you get through some of these things and, and you know what goes through your head and all of that stuff and and I appreciate the fact that you've taught Matt to be the person that he is because I'm very impressed with Matt as well I believe that he's a phenomenal driver I think he's got his head screwed on semi straight because he's 16 <laughs> you know? right, right. so there's a lot of maturing that does have to happen yeah. but there's a lot of things that I see in him that you just don't see in 16 year olds you mm -hmm. know attention to detail is one of them that doesn't come from anywhere else but from how he was raised and i think that's a phenomenal thing that you taught him and and i appreciate that um but matt as well i appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us i appreciate you coming over and setting this up absolutely yeah i think this is a really cool situation and and i'm excited to see what you guys have going for next year it sounds good in the final portion something i want to ask and we'll start with bill first any goals that you have for next year and I also at the end of that would like for you to thank any sponsors that you have um, it, you know for the time you have well a goal that I set forth for myself every year is to win as much as we possibly can um, I'd like to win another track championship I'd like to win I'd like to steal that that state championship back from Trevor right um, you know we uh, I sacrificed a, a, a few races this year um just to give matt some opportunity and and then that's you know that was a personal decision and and i wouldn't change that for anything um but i'd like to get that 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 state title back um i'd like to win a track championship again um i'd also like to see matt finish second to me in a track championship you right know, that'd be awesome yeah it's um, kind of flipped around for me <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it is yeah. um but you know one main goal that i have for myself every year is to keep the car on the racetrack and have the be able to not only for myself but for my sponsors and everybody that comes and watches every single week is to keep that car on the racetrack every single week because my you know the car's not doing anything for anybody if it's sitting in the garage broke down. Right. So um, working hard and making sure that everything is good there for my sponsors and my own sanity and the the well-being of everyone around me. Right. Um, keep that thing on the racetrack as much as we possibly can. Um, and 
as, as far as sponsors go, um, everybody that's on the car, and I know because I forget every single time I'm in victory lane, I always forget somebody, but um, Edgar Auctioneers, they've been, on, they've been with us for quite a few years now, and, you know, Nate helps us out with the car, um, working on it every, every weekend at the track. Um, Peter's uh, Snow and Mowing, um, Rivers Edge Hospital, Phenom Genetics, um, Maxim Chassis, the guys down at Maxim, um, for all the all the support that they give me. Every time I make a phone call down there, I don't know what it is, but every time I talk to Dan at Maxim, the following week we end up winning a race. It's I, I feel like I need to call Dan every single week just so we can win a race, but that the the advice that that guy can give you and the way that that guy can make your car handle just by making a phone call is uncanny it's unbelievable um hinchman driving suits best driving suit that you'll ever have um all american pressure washers um they've been with all american pressure washers has been with us since day one um give them guys a, a, a call their washers will clean your car way better than anything else out on the market. Um, let's see who else do I who else do I got on there? Simply Twisted. Simply Twisted. Yeah, I've talked about Jake more than once in this in this deal. He, yeah, he can put a motor together better than anybody and better than anybody that I know. Not that I know of a lot of engine builders, but he does a heck of a job with us uh, or for us. Um, GRP Motorsports, Greg, everything that he does, not only for us, but for the sprint car racing community in general. Um, awesome guy. I can't thank him enough for everything that he's done for me and, and for Matt. If it wasn't for him, Matt's racing career would not be even close to where it is right now. Yep. Um, so yeah, and for anybody, and oh, Shorty's Taiwan, my dad. Um, Taking time off and just showing yeah, up and helping us. Right, yeah, and if, if anybody needs some tires, give me a call or give Shorty a call down at the shop, 931-8080. Um, and check for anybody wondering about any of the services or, or uh, companies that Bill or Matt is going to talk about. All of them will be listed in the description of the YouTube video. Um, so if you have uh, one of them that sounds good to you. You need some power washing, you need some tires, whatever. Uh, just go into the description below. There'll be the business and the location and number. So go ahead and check that. Matt, um, how about you for 2022? What do you have for goals and anyone specifically you want to thank that, that your dad didn't? Um, I have, Goals are basically the same. I either have one of the cars winning a championship. I like... I want to try making a decent points run at uh, Arlington. Um, just, I've already got my first win under my belt, and uh, just want to chase down, chase down some of the, some of the fast guys. I like, I know I have the car to do it, but the thing is, do I have the mind to do it? That's that's it's all the, mental. Yep, and uh, but and my sponsors, I have to thank. GRP Motorsports, Greg Parent, like awesome guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be remotely close to where I am if it wasn't for Greg. Um, like he gave me a motor, like that one of the. Then again, my only motor he gave, he gave me a motor when I didn't even talk to the guy. I didn't even know what he looked like, and that is generosity that you will not give get from anyone else um uh jake olson from simply twisted motorsports builds one hell of a motor for us um river's edge hospital um mom and uh paula isn't it all right apx construction they giving me fi giving me fuel and uh go check them out and uh they're shorty's tire one grandpa closing down a shop every weekend and coming to help me that that's and him 
given me a car every weekend that is competitive enough to run up front as good as it does is awesome. Um, and that's the worst part about Matt racing is I lost my crew chief. <laughs> um, and then um, Nate Ediger from Ediger Auctioneers, they help us out a ton. Nate, Nate likes to help us out at any time he can. Um, Phenom Genetics helps Dad out a ton, helps me out a ton. Um, and... Uh, JP Sodden mowing my uncle John for coming out every weekend supporting us and uh yeah and just everyone who shows up to the races just to watch keeping keeping the tracks up and running that that's truly awesome keep yeah, it without up without fan support we would we wouldn't do this we wouldn't be able to do any of it we always appreciate the fans and we always appreciate the fans whom of which support the businesses that support racing so as always, and as I just mentioned, any of the businesses just named below will be in the description. Go check those out. Go give them the business. That is what we need. Screw the big corporations. Who cares if Amazon can get you stuff for cheaper? Go get it from the people that are supporting the stuff that we love. Oh, I almost forgot one. Powder Works. Yes. Powder, Powder Works Powder for works. giving me for giving me tires to run, like. And making our cars look as good as they do. Yes, exactly. As long as they do. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, um, and uh, oh, uh, Snap Graphics they, for giving us a badass looking wrap. That's the the car turned out wonderful this year. I love the look of it. So keep doing what you guys do. Well, very good, gentlemen. Again, I appreciate you having the time and the effort and all that stuff to do this because I know it's a busy time of year for you all. Um, but I'm really excited to go wheel to wheel with both of you next year. Oh yes, can't, um, I can't wait. I'm very wait. excited to get on track and, and have a lot of this now turn into actions rather than just speaking about it. Um, but I think 2022 is going to be a phenomenal year, not only for us and Arlington Raceway, but I just have this feeling. Shout out to Kyle Larson that sprint cars are about to blow up nationally. Yeah, yep. I just really believe that there's a different kind of momentum behind sprint car racing right now that. I'm not sure has ever been there before. Yep. No, nope. and it's going to keep I, pushing forward. Yep, and I think uh, I think a big uh, highlight is on the grassroots, and not so much on the on the big show, if you want to call it that. Shout out to Kyle Larson. We love you. Sprint cars love you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been listening to the Forged and Dirt podcast, the fastest podcast on the planet. Thanks for listening. <laughs>